Now we're going to talk about what happens to the slope of the capital allocation line if an investor borrows. Now, if an investor is allocating some portion of their wealth to the risky portfolio and some portion of their uh, wealth to the risk-free asset, well, allocating money to the risk-free asset is effectively lending. But it is entirely possible that an investor will choose to invest all of their money in the risky asset and then borrow even more and invest even more than 100% of their wealth in the risky asset. But since uh, investors can't borrow at the risk-free rate, effectively only the government or large corporations or large banks can borrow at the risk-free rate, or at least close to the risk-free rate, uh, this is going to create a kinked or flatter sloped CAL, capital allocation line, past the risky asset for values of Y greater than one. So here's the slope of the CAL. It's the sharp ratio of the risky asset. It's gonna be the expected return of the risky asset less the risk-free, that's the rise, divided by the risk of the risky asset or risky portfolio, that's the run. But again, this is only true for values of Y between zero and one. Uh, so those are investors that are allocating some portion of their wealth into the risk-free. In other words, those investors that lend a portion of their wealth at RF. But what about investors that wish to borrow? borrow to invest more than 100% of their wealth in the risky asset. Is this allowed? Yeah, it's very easy to borrow from a stockbroker. Uh, this is known as investing on margin. Uh, and so you invest the loan proceeds in stocks. But the borrowing rates are much higher than the risk-free. So let's take a quick look at these borrowing rates. So I've clicked the link and now I'm on this E-Trade page and I'm just going to scroll down to margin rates and this is the rate that E-Trade will lend a client money in order to invest these borrowed funds into stocks and you can see if you're going to borrow less than $10,000 you're going to pay 9% if you're going to borrow between $10,000 and $25,000 you're going to pay 8.7 and if you're going to get all the way up to a million bucks then you can pay 5.45%. This is an annualized APR on the money that you are borrowing. Next, we'll see the rates that you can earn if you lend money through E-Trade, the, uh, the money market mutual fund rate. So I've just Googled E-Trade money rates and I will scroll down to options for your uninvested cash E-Trade and click this and you can see oh they're offering um zero so you can see that there's a big difference between the risk-free rate that you might earn without any risk and the borrowing rate that you would have to pay if you were to borrow money and just to sort of do it we can google the treasury rates if i go to treasury uh treasury rates click that and i'll get the u.s treasury yield curve and you can see that here Scrolling down, you can see that the one month rate is eight basis points, 0.08%. And this is going to be uh, even slightly higher because you're committing to a month as opposed to an overnight rate that you would be earning. And so you can see the rates that you pay are significantly higher than the rates that you might earn. And so RB is significantly higher than RF. So if Y is greater than one, the investor is allocating more than total wealth in the risky asset and so therefore they are borrowing not investing in the risk-free so rf does not apply uh, because the investor is not allocating money to the risk-free asset and therefore not earning the risk-free rate so the investor is borrowing at a rate that is higher than the risk-free rate and we'll call this rb the borrowing rate and it is necessarily the case that the borrowing rate will be higher than the risk-free rate and so the slope of the cal for any value y greater than one is actually going to be this slope where we substitute rb for rf since rb must be larger than rf it must be uh, a flatter cal than for y less than one again because you are going to be paying a higher rate and so the risk return trade-off is flatter for values of y greater than one there's less marginal return for incurring extra risk and given essentially where we are with these very, very high borrowing rates, you better be hoping to make a lot of money on this borrowed cash. But for those borrowing and buying on margin, we're gonna end up with a cal that has this slope through P 
and then this slope after P. And this is going to affect my optimal allocation. If I'm going to have a Y that's greater than one, I'm now going to have our B in my equation uh, for my Y star, and this is going to make it, well, an even greater burden to overcome in order to be able to allocate in that amount. And so for y less than 1, I have a slope of 0.35. I earn an additional 0.35% return for each 1% increase in risk. But for y greater than 1, because I borrow at 6 and I lend at 3, I earn an additional 0.20%. Remember, in reality, this rate is extremely low, and this rate is likely higher uh, than the 6%. Okay, just to recap this chapter, for an investment universe of one risky asset or a risky portfolio and the risk-free asset defined by the return of the risky portfolio and the risk of the risky portfolio and the risk-free, then the allocation set is a straight line and it's called the capital allocation line. And we allocate wealth to the optimal combined portfolio C star by calculating Y star to maximize U. And so everyone faces the same investment opportunity set. They choose where they want to be on this as a function of their risk aversion level. They do so by calculating Y star to maximize U star. So what are we going to do next? Well, next we're going to look at this risky portfolio P. And instead of just assuming what the return and the risk are for this portfolio, we're going to see how we arrive at these numbers. And we're going to start with a risky portfolio made up of two risky stocks, and we'll see how these combine to form this risky portfolio.